three points, five rebounds, an assist, a steal, a block, four fouls, one of six from the field in 34 minutes. The kind of stat sheet the aggregators, meme, Twitter, all those places love to crush guys for, but what if I told you P.J. Tucker played a phenomenal Game 6 for the Bucks, which slightly evidenced probably by the plus 30 he ended up having. Remember the No Stats All-Star piece by Moneyball author Michael Lewis extolling the many virtues of Shane Battier that didn't show up in the stat sheet? To me, P.J. Tucker is the new No Stats All-Star. Make sure you subscribe, thumb up, and let's dive into the video to show you exactly what I mean by that. First of all, he's pretty discreet offensively. You'll see him obviously setting some ball screens, playing that small ball five, rolling down to the dunker, giving Giannis a little bit of space to operate, setting some clever ball screens like this one in transition before anyone's properly matched up with him that lets Drew Holiday come off naked for a three. He's a high IQ offensive player. Typically you'll find him in the corners where if he gets flown at, he'll make the extra pass. The smart, simple play, if you find him above the break, not a great shooter. Traditionally, only really excels at that corner three. But he is going to play hard, relentlessly hard. And I want you to remember this, 1.05 left in the third quarter, Milwaukee up five. This is one of his three offensive rebounds in the game, ends up getting Chris Middleton a bucket with his hustle. Keep that in mind because we'll come back to it later. Here was another one, fourth quarter, to really put the exclamation point. He didn't even get this one, but look at how Jeff Green potentially is going to be able to come over here and help box out Giannis, if not for P.J. Tucker crashing hard as hell from the corner on the Pat Connington shot, which makes Jeff Green have to turn his attention to P.J. and leaves Giannis relatively unattended to grab it and power back up for the exclamation point. Or how about here? Another huge play this time, end of the second quarter, with Milwaukee up five at the time, crashing again from the corner. Brooklyn ends up knocking the ball out of bounds, and then look at just the energy. Look at how guys feed off that passion that he has. He is playing hard as hell every possession. And then, like I said, one of the best corner three specialists in the league for a long time, the one shot he didn't make, a corner three. Defensively, he provides a master class in manipulating basically every action on the floor. How many times do we hear blog people and analytics people say, how in the world are you going under on Damian Lillard or Kevin Durant or Steph Curry? Well, you know what? You do have to do that occasionally. The thing is, PJ is just probably the best in the league at picking those spots. Like this, knowing when a screen is this high in transition and when he can quickly jump underneath it, play that cat and mouse game, be there so KD can't pull up despite going under funnel shots to guys like Blake Griffin instead of Kevin Durant. That doesn't, again, even show up in the stat sheet. We look at how a guy does just when matched up with somebody. What about when his matchup ends up passing the ball because he plays good defense to begin with? Look at again there, jumping under the first high screen in transition under again and if KD chooses to pull behind the second one you can test it the best you can and you take his temperature if he starts killing you from out there obviously you readjust here's an example of exactly why you have to go under sometimes screens this high up Drew Holiday doesn't do it here which leads to him being screened off which puts Brook Lopez in that famous drop type coverage which KD is perfectly comfortable just going downhill into his pull-up against. That one Drew needed to get under. That's where PJ's expertise, brilliant navigation defensively, brilliant technique. Look at how quickly he just jumps over this screen, even right here. That little step up into the ball, refusing to be screened. It's a mentality. Look at how he then jumps underneath it as Blake tries to re-angle the screen to bring KD to his left. Under. Under again. He went under twice there. That's just phenomenal technique. 
He is, everybody laughed when I said I would have voted for him as Defensive Player of the Year last year. The fact that he's never made an all-defensive team is a crime against humanity. And yes, KD ended up scoring here like he's going to do a lot. Because when you're going maybe the best scorer of all time, you're going to get lit up at times. He's going to be so hot that he's not going to miss. Even though, despite the step through being fine, his left foot clearly probably dragged there for a travel. You're still going to give up a lot of points when you're guarding the best scorers in the league. But there's nobody that resists better more consistently than P.J. does that makes things tougher. Look at him here jumping in a front in the post, making Brooklyn have to run a good 14 or so seconds off the shot clock before they even get it to him with finally five seconds on the shot clock and him all the way out at the three-point line trying to post up as P.J. ends up getting a great contest on the shot. Nothing comes easy against him versus Chris Middleton, let's say, in the post. Look at that one. And again, Chris Middleton's a damn fine defender in his own right, and he guards KD at times. He is one of the best defenders in the league as well. I mean, just look at the contrast, not going against P.J.'s wrecking ball style defense. Look at how KD here just decides he can't even post him up. He's going to come out, tries to wrestle with him for a second, but P.J.'s so damn physical – I'm going to come out, catch the ball out at the three-point line instead. Where right, I got four seconds. And again, look at how aggressive he is. Look at what a great stance he's in. Into the ball. Ball pressure at the level. Hand up. Hand always in the eyes. Contesting every shot right there. Immovable. Unshakable. Writers should be ashamed that he has never made an all-defensive team. Absolute travesty. Look at that leverage game. Look at that when KD opens up right here. Look at how PJ's using his chest, bodying him up, chest in the ball. High hand, high hand, contest. Big time freaking defense. Drew Holiday. I love Drew Holiday. No disrespect to him. He's made three all defensive teams. Look at how easy KD is able to just back him down, back him down, back him down can't do that to P.J. Tucker. Not easily, I promise you. Even just smart situational basketball like this as KD's trying to set the screen for Mike James. Look at how P.J. helps his teammate out, Pat Connington, as he tries to get under by having a hand up so Mike James can't pull up right there. And then as James ends up driving it anyway, despite guarding Kevin Durant, knowing this is one of the few situations where you can't help off him at the three-point line. You can't leave him willy-nilly. But if you see the ball get downhill like this on a drive that would have been a layup, that time you got to come in and help take that away. You live with Jeff Green taking a three instead of a layup. Smart, situational, help, defense. They say the NBA doesn't play defense anymore. Obviously, that person hasn't watched P.J. Tucker. Look at how just in this ATO after timeout play, I mean, how long does he take? before KD can even pop out to get the ball like he's supposed to. 18 on the clock when it really starts. Takes him 8 seconds to finally pop out and even get the ball. Who's better one-on-one -on -one defending ISOs in the league than P.J. Tucker? Look at how hard KD had to work for 24 seconds just to get that shot off. Look how many times end of quarters... P.J. is matched up with K.D., and he's not calling for help. He's not backing down. He's not looking behind him for screens. He's being the aggressor. He's jumping up into K.D., into the ball, not backpedaling, not letting K.D. dictate things, but jumping up into him, staying right there, moving his feet constantly, attacking K.D., being the aggressor defensively. Tremendous, tremendous defense. Here we go again, end of the quarter, mano y mano. Jump up into the ball. Make him feel you. Put some hands on him. A little contact. That's rugged, tremendous physical defense. Ending with a block out, making sure KD can't rebound his own miss. That's big time right there. And then again, I told you I'd come back to the end of the third quarter. Every play matters. What was it, five at that time? Becomes 13 to end the quarter. How many times does KD just walk guys down, shoot this hezzy pull-up three? That's his move. Look how locked into it PJ is. He's right there. 
That's studying your opponent. That's knowing your personnel. That's being locked into the game plan. Off the ball when he's guarding, let's say, James Harden like he is switched on to him on this possession. You know what a stunt is? If you know basketball, you know what it is. Faking at a guy who has the ball while staying home. That's literally textbook. Making Blake Griffin have to think about this for a second. Make him think about shooting the ball. So then his man has time to recover and contest. Textbook stunt right there. A few times he did have to switch. Look at him here. Even though you're guarding a tremendous high percentage three-point shooter in Joe Harris. Doesn't mean you can't be in a stance, be in the gap. Pistol stance, hands out. Dissuading the drive from Kevin Durant. Staying with your man, getting back out as he drifts out. And then last couple plays, I want you to watch as Giannis is switched on to KD here. Look at PJ guarding Jeff Green, but he knows his assignment. He's getting out of the charge circle, comes over perfectly to help as Giannis gets beat, cut off the KD drive, force KD to throw it out of bounds. Tremendous help defender. Again, that passion. Switch again. Look at this one. Not only does he come over and stop the ball, help Giannis out and stop KD on the drive, he also recovers back to his, swipes the ball away from Jeff Green trying to power up and steals another possession from Milwaukee and at the time a 12-point game. Non-stop hustle, passion, heart. Doesn't all show up in the stat sheet. KD had 32, but on 30 shots, 3 assists, 7 turnovers. That's as hard as you can make him work. That's perfect defensive intensity, defensive discipline. That's what P.J. Tucker does. That's why, for me, he's the new no-stats all-star. Perfect example of a super impactful player who does his job, plays tremendous defense, is in the right spots, knocks down corner threes, understands the game, plays harder than anybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you thumb up, hit that subscribe button. P.J. Tucker, the new no-stats all-star.